what would you say is the biggest lesson that you learned serving in Vietnam um, that, that maybe helped you later on in your investing career? Well, it's coming true today, I hate to say, Kirby, is that I saw communism coming into America. Okay. You know, and so I cannot take a great risk. But so I wrote Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I got trashed for saying your house is not an asset, savers are losers, and all that stuff. Typical Marine Corps staying statements. <laughs> <laughs> and I got trashed for it. Trashed. So I'm coming out with a new book, as you know, it's called The Capitalist Manifesto. And you know, I, I don't care if you're a Marxist or a capitalist, or, you know, I just want the freedom. You want to take the vaccine shot? Good, take it. But don't force me to take it. Don't censor me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so a long answer to a short question. I remember the first time I, I, flew, I was a carrier pilot, I was a gunship pilot. And the gunships hung behind this, the Jolly Green Giants and the 46s, like your Chinooks. And so we'd hang in the back there like this twin, twin gunships, you know, and we'd be picking up anybody that came after them going in. And so the first time I went feet dry, I crossed the thing. And we turn turn north, and we're flying to Way Citadel, where our tent was fought. And I saw all these beautiful houses along the beaches of Vietnam, like like Hawaii, you know, these mm. beautiful white sand beaches, huge French chateaus, because it was called the French Indo or the French, whatever I call it, Riviera, the French Indochina Riviera. Mm. All these houses were bombed down. And my lessons from the West Point graduate the B-17 pilot and all his reading Capital Communist Manifesto and Hitler and Stalin and Lenin and Mao, I said, oh my God, it's real. Do, do you know what I mean? All the lessons that he was teaching our little plebe class in New York in 65 mm -hmm. was coming real as I flew along the beaches, escorting these uh, troop transports. And then what I saw at that was like premonition so that's America. Mm. And then today, you know, we have uh, what happened in Afghanistan. If that's not communism at the best, how can they give up Bagram and leave all the weapons to our enemy? Yeah, yeah. And it makes me it's sick. Mind-boggling. It makes me sick. So that's a long way of saying so I'm coming up with capitalist manifesto. I'm probably going to lose at least sixty percent of my people who like me <laughs> because I'm still fighting communism. In, I mean, we we talked about the the impact of your first book. Um, what what is it? What's the impact that you want to have by writing this book? I'm still fighting for freedom. Same thing you did. You know that that Marine Lieutenant Colonel who got put in jail for criticizing our Joint Chiefs of Staff. That's disgraceful. Now that, yeah. that, that Marine had a lot of guts. And I just don't like what's, uh, our freedom of speech, I'm not against Republicans or Democrats or COVID or not COVID or gender identity. I just want my freedom. Right. And they took that guy's freedom away. Yeah. And, uh, I live in Arizona. And this Bi Biden has borders wide open. Like in, in August alone, 350,000 undocuments come across, 400,000 in September. What are they doing? What are they doing? Yeah, and it, well, and it seems like capitalism has become sort of a dirty word in the mainstream narrative. And yes. I looked up the definition before this just to make sure that, you know, I'm tracking exactly what it is. And I wanted to share it with the audience, you know, so they understand, but it's an economic and political system in which a country's trade and industry is controlled by private owners for profit rather than the state. And to me, it feels like that's what our country was founded on, like lots of personal freedom, low government intervention. Why do you think it's become such a negative spin on this? Well, uh, when I came back from Vietnam in 73, January, January 3rd, I remember rotation day out of Vietnam. Every guy had it memorized, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. 
I, I land at Norton Air Force Base in California. And as the plane, it's, it's in my book, Capitalist Manifesto, as we're taxiing up, the pilot comes on, he says, ladies and gentlemen, he says, uh, America has changed. And I didn't know what he was talking about, but this is in 73, but all the Woodstock generation, all the hippies were waiting to create us. Mm. So I got my 16 troopies, you know, I was a first lieutenant. I never made captain <laughs> or disciplinary problems. <laughs> But anyway, I thought my most important job was bring my 16 guys home. You know, if you know what I mean, that was a lieutenant's job, bring them home alive. And we came home, we crashed three times together. We came home together. So, and we get back and then we, we get hit by eggs and spit and all this stuff. And then I knew America had changed. And what my B-17 pilot, my West Point graduate instructor was warning us of had come true. Marxism had come into America and it's only gotten worse. So I wrote, I wrote in my new book, Capitalist Manifesto, it's actually a continuation of Rich Dad Poor Dad. Mm. So Capitalist Manifesto says, how do you counter communism taught in schools by teaching capitalism in our homes? And that's where capitalism has to be taught in our homes because in school, it's 100% Marxist. Yeah, exactly, which is, what, what, was the, what was the last, the last chapter in, in uh, Communist Manifesto? Abolition of private property. Mm -hmm. So you and I are traitors to the system because we're, at, we're advocating private property, real estate, yeah. stocks, real bonds. And so that's what you see is happening right now. Yeah, exactly. So in 1973, Kirby, you know, and flying along the beaches of Vietnam and doing horrible things out there, uh, what my English teacher was teaching, reading books that a school did not allow us to read, came true.